video I'm easy had a great had a great war it was really close I'm gonna break down the what, what happened in the war a little bit how I scored points for the players that are trying to get into server wars but they're either too intimidated or they just don't get it all yet so there's a lot of ways you can score points you don't only have to go to the other server to score points that's a big misconception uh, but first let's get into the recovery At, before and after the war you have your personal, uh, before the war, you have a personal buildup, and after the war, you have recovery. It's really important that you get involved in this. First of all, you have power boost in both the before and after, the, the pre and post war. This is basically building troops. This is how you get the most power. So you, you're going to build up your troops before and after the war. If you can, you want to fill up that, uh, that, the power because if you're able and I'll use a lot of my training speed ups to, to do this too the reason is that if you get the pre-war the, the the final um, the final accomplishment the final is 45 hours of speed uh, I think I'm gonna scroll down right here or yep the final is 45 hours of speed and that's the final. You actually get speed throughout the whole thing. You get about 90 hours before the war starts. Then in post-war recovery, you get about the same 90 hours back again. So between the before and after the war, you get like 90 hours of speed ups. Then you also get the troops that, you get, that you're building. So there's a big advantage for taking part in the war. And that's, that's if you don't even score anything in the actual war itself. Now keep in mind that after every war, you have the same two events. Uh, one of the events is the Whispering uh, Rune event. The other event is the... Um, well, first let's do this Whispering Rune. I won't get ahead of myself. So the Whispering Rune event, you're, you're, if you've seen any of the past videos, you never want to cash in any of your rune chests until you're in the Whispering Rune event. So at the, as soon as this event started, I cashed in all of the... Now because this is post-war, I cashed in all of the rune, rune boxes, chests that I got during the war. And now I'm going to combine them all and try to ad advance my runes as far as I can. And every time I use mana, that I'm scoring points for the Whispering Rune event. So you want to try to at least max out your event. So go back and forth, and as you're maxing out your runes, or you're, you're advancing them, see exactly wh how you're scoring in the Whispering Rune event, and, and just try to, try to make sure you at least get uh, all three stages of the benefits from it. And then at that point you can stop or you can continue going with them. It's, they're expensive. It takes mana to, to advance. And if you're, if you're in the T4, T5 area, you know how hard it is to keep mana. <laughs> uh, next is the Adventure Path. This is something that a lot of people overlook. Um, me being a partner specialist. <laughs> partner specialist. Me being a partner specialist. This is a huge event for me. But what you really want to do is you want to try to score on all you want to try to collect everything you can on the adventure path in order to do that you, you might have to spend some gems to do it normally I'll spend um, I, I'm one of the people that get the month card so I get 400 gems every day then whatever events I have going on I'll get the gems from it so I usually get about a thousand a day most of the time I use those towards golden turtles Except for when we have events like the Adventure Path event, then I will actually spend 500 gems and try to redo um, the energy in my in my Adventure Path. It is hard to get all of the spears and all of the fishing, uh, the bait, and all of the speed ups, and just, it's hard to get it all without using a few gems. So that's what I do. Now moving on, this is how I scored points in the war. It was actually pretty simple. Vortmo said he's going to attack. Uh, we found a player that was pretty strong that we thought we could in entice into attacking Vortmos. So what we did was, I was, I'm close to him in our in our, uh, in our our hive. So what Vortmos did is he scouted right there on top of the enemy. 
Uh, he poured it on top of the enemy. Then he threw a scout down. As soon as he scouted, the enemy scouted back. He saw how many troops Fort had, which Fort, I don't know if he was hiding some or not, but as soon as he attacked, then I sent reinforcements. Now remember, there, there's a kind of there's a trick to the whole sending reinforcements. If I was to send all the reinforcements that I had the second that he poured it over there, then the enemy would have scouted him. And if he was able to see the reinforcements, I'm not even sure if he had anti-scout on, then he would be able to tell that he's heavily reinforced and then he may not attack. So what you do is, first you figure out how far away you are from the person you're going to reinforce. Then you figure out how far away the attacker is. In this case, I was 24 seconds away to send reinforcements. The attacker was 90 seconds away. So I could wait until one minute. After he attacked, I waited one minute. Then I sent reinforcements over to the to uh, Bort's uh, base. He get he gets attacked two times, and basically we crushed him. <laughs> Thanks to Bort, I just all that is reinforce, and I got server war points for it. Uh, moving on again on the other server, on three two eight, we had some of our best players over on three two eight. This right here was a scout done on one of their top players. There was just tons and tons of reinforcements on this one account. Um, if you saw earlier, I, I missed saying it while it was on the screen, but there was like 700 million mana, 600 million ivory. This is this is like a dream come true. Problem was is that he that he had over a million troops that he had reinforced on his base. So what we have to do is make sure that we don't attack this base and take a massive loss. So everyone that was over there now. One thing that once you're in the other server, and if you have a group of people that go over to the other server, like in our in our uh, in our server, our server may fight with each other, or we may attack each other. We're a peaceful server, but people still fight and attack. Um, but when we get to the other server, we're all on one team. We all join the same clan, and then we were able to reinforce each other. And we sent a very large amount of troops over to this very large account, and able to we were able to send two million three hundred ninety one thousand troops over they were defending with one million they ended up losing 23 million power well we lost two million power just a great great attack uh to, to find something like this uh, their, their mouth must have been watering i believe jules left led the attack from our server she's one of the if not the largest player in our server um so great job to all the guys and girls from three two three it was a close it was a close battle I, I believe we ended up winning by six which that's like a three point swing on both sides so that's a pretty close battle on either side if this had gone the other way and we were to mess up and we were to lose 23 million because you know Jules is a 200 million player so she could lose 23 million pretty not, not I'm not gonna say easily but but it could happen if they if we attacked with a million and they had two million defenders so Really smart. They ended up losing 445,000 troops. I don't even know if I've had 445,000 at one time yet. And now there is a there's a little bit of a trick to it as well. Um, if you look, I, I believe it's coming up in a second. Some of the players that were reinforcing, and I believe Jules was one of them. Who she led the attack. She has a very large amount of. Uh, uh, um, she can she can be reinforced the most. Or, or at least maxed out. There's a couple of them that are maxed out. Uh, but if you notice here, uh, she did ha take some losses. About 4,000 losses on the T4s. She had T4s on all three troops. And those were kind of the meat shields for the T5s. And if you'll notice that all the MDMA did the same thing. He lost T4 troops. All three of his T4s, he lost some troops. But all of the T5s were left unharmed. Um, Saint only brought in T4s, so she lost a little bit of all all three of the T4s, bringing in 90,000 apiece, pretty big. Um, Pebbles did the same thing. All of her T5s were all safe because she had T4s underneath them. So you, if you notice the trend here, uh, uh, Splooshy Splash brings in 367,000 T5s. I don't know why the defender didn't shield up. I, I, I didn't see the details. Maybe he had troops out and he couldn't shield up. I don't know how you could take such a hit <laughs> but if you notice a trend of what's going on with the meat shield that's when you put in t3 to protect your t4 put in t4 to, to protect the t5 you put in a, a fairly large number of troops from from a lesser um, T <laughs> and that will protect the older 
uh, the, the the larger so the t4s will protect the t5s a little bit uh, I'm not sure I'll I'm going to have much more details on all of this I don't have time for it in this video and it, there's a lot to it in my opinion so I want to I, I want to get into the t4 meat shield for t5 a little more but not this video and if you see here on the screen this is what how you recover from such a bad attack not many liquor bottles <laughs> not advocating drinking but it, unless you're attacking lose 23 million <laughs> so overall great great war for us what I want to suggest to the people that don't know if they want to participate they can always do what something that I've been a professional at since my early days playing during war you can keep a shield up the entire time and go out and collect relics <laughs> you can be a professional relic hunter and you can get significant rewards from collecting relics so you don't you don't have to be the person that has to farm during during war and now I just collected all these relics just as an example I, you know, don't think I'm one out there just always doing nothing but collecting relics. Although I've had my share. But if you are a lower player and you're trying to keep the base moving forward during war, you know you can't collect during war, so you can go out and collect relics, and that way you can keep on pushing forward. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Another server war result video. We're going to try to keep these coming. I want everyone to see the server wars see how we scored points I scored points this time just by reinforcing another player that got attacked by another player we ended up winning the attack and I ended up getting like 130th place in the overall war which gave me all the rewards for the war which were significant uh, before the before and after war I ended up breaking about 250 hours of speed ups gotta like it so hope you enjoyed the video till next time it's been easy take care everybody